Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's leg of my data science journey, we're going to discuss the WGU Masters of Data Analytics, or the MSDA degree. All material is Creative Commons license. That means it's free for you to reuse within your organization. First up, an introduction and overview. In December 2019, I began reshaping the back half of my career by enrolling in WGU's Master of Science in Data Analytics, the MSDA online degree. The timing was incredibly lucky because the pandemic started shortly after I was admitted. That enabled me to focus all that extra stay at home time into the degree. 10 plus months and 1,208 after work hours later, I was a happy recipient of an MSDA graduate degree. And with perspective four months later, I'm still just as happy about the whole process and the outcome. My only regret is not recognizing that this flexible option was available to me years earlier. WGU's MSDA program is 100% online, enabling you to better juggle a full-time job, or family commitments, and other life obligations. The learning model is competency-based, allowing you to learn at your own pace, be it fast or slow. Whether you pass final exams and final projects depends on whether you understood the material. If you understood, you pass. If not, you fail, and you receive a few structured retries before washing out. For an introverted self-starter with some existing knowledge like me, the process was bliss. Courses where I had existing expertise went fast, like the SQL course. Courses where I had a steep learning curve were still manageable because I could deeply focus on each one at a time through to completion. I enjoyed working through the lectures, the reading materials, the quizzes, the final projects were really fun, and yes, even preparing for the final exams. Every night I would do that work and it was fun. The structured learning was energizing each evening. I could always make forward linear progress. Where with each hour of effort that I put in, I could check off another chapter of reading or another video lecture series or another practice exam, etc. It was just nice to make that forward linear progress with the structured learning. Next up, what is data analytics? The short answer is that data analytics is roughly synonymous with data science. It is the intersection of computer science or IT with math and statistics, and with domain or business knowledge. The long answer is that data analytics is micro-focused on extracting meaningful insights to make actionable changes, mostly using structured data. Whereas data science is macro-focused and tries to predict the future and discover new questions to drive innovation, often using unstructured data. Both involve data mining, data mapping, data munging, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data modeling, and using modern analytic and programming tools like Python or R, SAS, SQL, and using visualization tools like Tableau or Excel. Mastering data analytics will set you up for a career as a data scientist, a research analyst, a data engineer, advanced analytics expert, a data analyst, a business intelligence analyst, or a business analyst. Out on Google Trends, going back to January 1st, 2004, you can see that data analytics and data science are both trending upward. A little bit of a difference here at the end during the pandemic, but it's probably just white noise. They both have solid growth. Next up, is the degree any good? Yes, the degree is considered good. It consistently ranks in the top 10 and top 20 lists of best online master's degrees in data science. Over to the right, there's six such examples of it, 2021, 2020, spanning the years and spanning many different ranking organizations or bodies. Is the program accredited? Of course, by the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. And that's the same organization that accredits giants like the University of Washington, Brigham Young University, etc. Are you leveling up? If you already have many years of experience as either a data analyst or a data engineer or a programmer analyst, and you just want to transition into a data scientist, then completing this degree can be a great approach. On the other hand, if you're young and recently finished a bachelor's degree, then maybe a traditional brick and mortar graduate degree would provide better results, especially given the cohort groups and networking opportunities that's in those brick and mortar programs, because that'll drive your subsequent job search. Online programs just can't compete. They don't really have this equivalent cohort groups and networking opportunities. We'll discuss later what they do have that tries to bridge that gap. The WGU 2019 annual report on page 24 shows that the three-year graduation rate <coughs> has ranged between 63 to 71 percent. And if you invert that or subtract it from 100 percent, that means that the washout rate is between 29 percent to 37 percent. Why that matters is because that means 
This is not a diploma mill. Students do wash out, and I can attest to that. I had to study hard to pass the final exams and do the final projects. This is definitely not a diploma mill. Using opinion polls to rate whether the degree is any good, the WGU MSDA Career Outlook website sums up the answer nicely in the next two charts. The Harris Poll Survey results clearly indicate that employers, here we go, happy employers, 97% think that graduates are prepared, 87% that they perform, and 97% that they wow. And survey 300 employers and 1,374 new college graduates. So that's the happy employers. If we go look at the happy graduates, they're confident, more so than US average. They're working, more so than US average, and they're satisfied. And when was this poll? 2018? That's ah, a couple years dated. But the point is, the employers and the grads are happy. And anecdotally, the degree has checked some boxes for me that opened doors for a career transition. Looking back, I'm happy that I put the time and effort into completing the degree. As a prospect, I was really excited upon first learning there was a viable path for me to attain a graduate degree. And it was all online. And I was fired up and I couldn't wait to dive in. As a student, I thoroughly enjoyed taking the classes, learning the material, practicing the material and projects, and reinforcing it during the final exam prep. And finally, as a graduate, I fondly look back and I'm so happy with the decision to put that effort into obtaining the degree and advancing my career. A related suggestion is to discuss obtaining an MSDA degree with your boss as part of your annual career goals. Some firms might either pay part, if not all the costs. Other firms might give you some comp time, but expect most firms, especially smaller ones, to do neither for practical reasons. But regardless, linking your outside career goals to your annual career goals is a good idea. It shows you put in the effort to grow and improve, and it shows where you want to go. Good managers want you to succeed, and they'll find opportunities for you to grow into. If nothing else, it's one less item you have to come up with on the annual performance review. Next up, is the degree a good value? The final overall cost depends on how fast you can work through the classes. The degree currently costs $3,835 per six month term, and you can take the classes as fast or slow as you want, but the price remains fixed at $38.35 per term. So that means if you complete all 11 courses in six months, one term, you just pay $3,835, but that's highly unrealistic as far as the time frame goes. Now, if you did it in two terms like I did, <clears throat> you could have a full-time job, 40 hours a week, and if you could were able to put in another 30 or so hours per week studying, then it could take you two terms, seven to 12 months, and it would cost you 7,670, two of these. And if you could do it in three terms, which is the WGU average, 72% uh, of graduates finish in three terms or 18 months, that would cost you 11,505. And if you could do it in four terms, and WG defaults to four terms, that would cost you $15,340. I wanted to mention scholarships. I received literally dozens of emails about scholarships that would cut many thousands of dollars off my tuition, but I didn't participate, so I can't really comment. But I did want you to be aware that these scholarships exist and they pay most of your first quarter from the dollars that I saw. I'm not sure that they'd keep going after that. It might be a one-time thing to hook you, and then if it takes you three or four quarters, they're gonna receive their money on the back end. But here you go, you can see from the WGU website, uh, 2,500 for a scholarship, 5,000 for a scholarship. So this slide here really answers the question, is the degree a good value? The MSDA degree has been named a best value school by University Research and Review for seven consecutive years. And the degree routinely makes the top 10, top 20 lists of the most affordable data science master's degrees in many, many different places. Just go look online and you'll see a lot and I'll put down in the description below this YouTube video links to some of those. Next up, will the degree get you a job by itself? No, but sure, if this were an Ivy League master's of data science and you'd paid six figures for it, then it would likely land you a job at a corporate giant upon graduation with no prior experience because you'd be buying networking and brand reputation. But with WGU, you're buying competency and experience. For context, if an entry-level data scientist with just two years under his or her belt is our baseline, and he or she has accumulated 4,160 hours of experience, that's 40-hour work weeks, then the 1,208 hours I spent completing the MSDA degree is three and a half times smaller. 
So the bottom line here is that actual work experience matters. You'll crank up more hours and get more experience being in an actual job. So what the degree does do is propel you far down the path towards getting a job, just not all the way. It proves to an employer that you can focus and achieve goals, that you can follow a plan and carry out tasks, and that you have a foundation of basic understanding of data science in place. If necessary, having the MSDA on your resume or LinkedIn can serve as a tiebreaker between the final few candidates in an interview process. So these are just some of the advantages that armoring up with the MSDA degree can provide in your job search. Some tips about using the degree to get a job? Learn from my mistakes. If you plan properly, you can roll your coursework, your final projects, into your career portfolio to share with prospective employers. I wish I'd done that. I didn't. WGU also offers career and professional development services, career advisors, weekly webinars, and job events and job fairs. Unfortunately, I didn't take advantage of those, so I can't really comment. But they have a lot of stuff that they offer. You see over here, X clips from their website. So do take advantage of those. Next up, what are the courses? The table to the right is taken from the WGU MSDA program guide on the website, and it shows the standard path in which courses should be taken. However, ultimately, you and your course counselor decide what course order is best for you. Maybe you have a bunch of experience in an area and you want to take those classes first, or vice versa. So the default is four terms, or two years, and you'll see the breakdown of three term one in gray, term two in white, term three in gray, term four in white. That's just their recommended order. But many people can do it faster in three or even two terms if they work hard. There's 11 courses here, totaling 31 competency units, or credits, to complete the degree. The courses are grouped by five areas of study, data analytics, data management, data mining, data visualization, and the capstone. It is beyond the scope of this article or this video to get into the details behind each of the courses, but there's a 10-page program guidebook PDF that you can review out on the WGU website, and I'll put the link to that in the description below this video. Next up, how much effort is required? Well, it depends. Quite a bit of effort if your goal is to learn and grow and really understand the material. Less if your goal is merely to pass and to get the degree as fast as possible. So the difficulty level. Although most final exams are multiple choice, and there's one exception involving roughly 50% of the test being writing SAS code on the certification, but that's not there anymore. That's not part of the program. Anyway, even though they're multiple choice, they're not easy. And to pass, you have to spend ample time studying. They, I, I wasn't exaggerating. They have, you know, is the answer A, B, C, or is it A and B, or A and C? You really got to know your stuff, and they have trick questions in there. So final projects were also difficult, generally taking me half to two-thirds of the overall course time. So if you have years of work experience for the given course, then you can complete the work two to three times faster than the average person. I did so with the SQL class, coming in about four times faster, but I had thousands of hours of work experience over 20 plus years. But then there were other classes I went slow because it was new material. So when the material is new to you, plan on putting in a lot of effort to complete the course. And likewise, if you know the material, then great. That's one of the benefits of a competency-based education is you get credit for your existing knowledge and you can take the test, pass the test, or do the final exam quicker than you otherwise would in a traditional brick and mortar. Using a study plan as a checklist. So from the very beginning, day one, entering the program, I front-loaded each course by setting up a detailed study plan. I took all the available learning materials and tasks from the course mentor, from the course instructor, from the coursework online, from the course chatter of other students. I would spend hours and hours going through, gathering all that information and laying it all out in a checklist like this over to the right here. And this was for my uh, C741 statistics for data analytics course. So part of the value was organizing the workload, but it also gave me self-motivation and it was, accidentally stumbled upon this, but it was gamification. I would get a mental reward because it might be late and I might be part way through this three and a half hours, but I would just look at this and go, hey, if I spend another hour and a half and stay up a little bit later, I can finish this, check it off, and move on to the next chapter the next night. So I really liked organizing the workload this way, and it had the added benefit of being able to roll all this up and see how long it took. But the primary two purposes were A, to organize the workload, and B, to motivate myself to work through it. It just felt good to make incremental progress, no matter how small, so long as it was measurable and a score existed. So by the numbers, my 10 months of experience getting the degree is depicted 
over to the right in the bullets. Two quick caveats. One, the course curriculum changed on me. And I, as I entered the second, in August of 2021, entering the second term. And so that's about five months ago. So the classes I took rolled up in these numbers are now different. Maybe half to two thirds of the classes are the same and the rest are changed. So take the numbers with a grain of salt. They don't all apply anymore. Caveat number two regarding paper size, page length, lines of code, the capstone project video length. There's really no limit. Just focus on covering everything required in the rubric as succinctly as possible and you'll pass on the first try. It's actually a bad thing to go off rubric and try to add unnecessary, unnecessary size or complexity. Make it easy for the graders. Even map out the sections in your work that correspond to the specific rubric line items. So my page numbers are just kind of a rough gauge. Most people probably do a little less and that's great, it's perfectly fine. So by the numbers, one graduate degree, there were 11 courses, 32 credits when I took it, 31 credits now. It took me 10 months, 42 weeks. There were five final exams proctored. There were seven final projects, including the capstone. There were 316 pages of written report, including lines, of, uh, uh, pages of code too. I copied those out. There were two SAS certifications. Those were fantastic. They're no longer available though. Uh, the course materials change. And it cost me for two six month terms, 7,670. That's a little bit less because the dollars were a year ago. So that is by the numbers. If we measure the effort required by the hours, it was 1,208 hours total, 562 hours of that, about half was on projects. 215 hours were on exams and studying, most of that studying for exams. 200 hours were taken video lectures and 231 hours were on textbooks and labs. If we look at the effort by the ratios, it was about 31 hours of work per CU credit. And it was about 29 hours on average per week above the full-time 40 hours a week to get it done in 10 months. So it's not a degree mill, you gotta put in the effort. But it's fun and it's well worth it and I wish I'd done it a long time ago. And here's all the details. I'm not gonna go through it, but this is how it all broke down. There's the classes one through 11, the course number at the time. The, these two are gonna match. That's the credits that were done, the credits that I still had to go. And here's the total time per course in hours, the total weeks it took me to do the course. Sure, some of these courses take a week, but they're still 32 hours, 36 hours, and it's just a one credit uh, I'm sorry, it's a two credit or a one credit class. And they're both programming. I hadn't done R before, but I had done Python. So, and then there's other ones that took nine weeks, but that was 181 hours and it just, it took what it took. But, and then there's the paper size and the exams and how long it took to study. I mean, there's the, uh, there's the overall time and then there's video lectures and textbooks and labs and when all that's done you start taking practice exams and basically these are practice exams and and going back and restudying because I wasn't doing good enough so anyway that's all of the time and the breakdowns down there 42 weeks 1208 hours etc that's how it all flows out this admissions orientation career planning sure it's 75 it wasn't that many it was like 30 to 40 in the beginning before I started the program. And then in between, I would do little bits of research and I would just throw those hours into this bucket. So that's why it's NA. I don't have uh, any dates or times or anything or the, the week spread because it was basically across the whole 42 weeks. But anyway, if you want that, take a screenshot, kind of interesting. And recognize that like the SAS 1 and SAS 2, they're they're no longer present in the program. And I don't know about the Python and R, I think those are wired into the actual courses. They're not standalone two in one credit anymore. Uh, so anyway, a lot of these courses have changed and the materials, it's still present, but it's morphed in. And I, I don't know, because I'm not in the program and I can't see access to it other than what's online. So anyway, that is what it was like about eight months ago. Next up, how are courses graded? WGU is competency-based, a method of academic instruction and evaluation based upon students demonstrating their mastery of a subject, according to Rasmussen. Students demonstrate mastery of competencies at the end of each course by completing and passing either an objective assessment, which is a final exam, or a performance assessment, which is a final project. Course flow tends to alternate back and forth between the two equally. You do a final exam, then you do a final project. Next one's a final exam, next one's a final project. 
WGU does not have grades officially, but it, it really does have two categories or two grades. There's fail, which is your traditional F, D, or C, and then a WGU pass is equivalent to a traditional B. I would argue there's also a rare third grade of excellence award, which is equivalent to a traditional A or A+. I only achieved excellence awards on three out of 11 courses, and that's in spite of trying really hard. So these excellence awards are not just handed out like candy on Halloween, where everyone gets some. Also note that all objective assessments, or final exams, are proctored. And I don't like proctored tests, but they all are. This means that they're scheduled to start at a specific time, at least one day, if not more in advance. And oftentimes it's a week or two in advance. You must be sitting in a room, in your home, in total science, silence, with the door locked, so that no disruptions can occur. You must have an approved video camera for the proctor to watch your every move and to ensure that no sounds are made. You must provide proof of your identity, like a driver's license, uh, visual at the start of the test. They have you run through with your cell phone, mobile phone, take a picture of both sides of your driver's license, and then take a picture from four different sides, you know, stand wherever your chair is, and take a picture in front of you, to the left, to the right, and behind you, and then frequently they'll even have you take your uh, camera, your laptop camera, well you can't use a laptop camera, your uh, required camera to the side and they'll have you spin it around the room. And you have to have your ears and head uncovered, you can't have the cell phone within six feet. There's a lot of rules and they exist, they're strict, to avoid cheating. And uh, any violation of the rules will result in the test being immediately terminated. And depending on circumstances, you'll either fail that test or receive a waiver that doesn't account against, does not count against you if you can prove that it was an internet outage or some similar technical problem. For either outcome, you'll have to retake the test with new questions. For me, back before the pandemic, when I was taking certification exams, I always drove to the test center. That way, internet problems, hardware problems, that was on them, not on me and my house. But during the pandemic, everything went to in the home and, and you really had to be on your game, make sure your internet was up, your cable didn't go down, your camera was working, etc. So proctored exams, ugh, they're a necessary evil. Next up, what kind of interaction can I expect? Like so many things, it depends. From the moment you show interest, WGU assigns an enrollment counselor to determine if the program is a fit, to help you work through enrollment processes, to get all your necessary paperwork turned in, etc. They shepherd you through the process of enrollment and get you to your first day when you're admitted and can start classes. From there, you're handed over to a program mentor who works with you throughout the remainder of the degree, all the way to the end. The mentor discusses and coordinates your degree plan with you, activating each course as you register, emailing you kickoff learning materials and tip sheets and suggested YouTube pre-trainings, etc. The mentor talks with you at least once a week to check in on progress, to help remove any barriers or resolve any issues. You interact with your mentor the most of any WGU staff and they're very helpful. The course instructors or the professors have office hours in which you can do online meetings or phone calls to ask questions, etc. The three interactions I had with the professors were all excellent and resolved the confusion on my end quickly. But note that I'm an introvert and a self-starter, so I tend to avoid the interaction until I really needed it. I just thought, hey, I can do this all online. I don't need to talk with them. And uh, some programs you really need to be in talking with other students, talking with TAs, talking with professors. In this particular instance, for this particular degree, fitting my needs, I didn't need to do too much. But when I needed it, they were there and it was very helpful. Um, so the, the model works good. There are also program faculty who oversee course content, but I'm not sure what reasons you'd have or how you go about contacting them other than to make course content suggestions via email, which is readily available. And I believe some of the program faculty are just the instructors who are rotating off to go build out new coursework or, or change things up. And finally, we have cohorts. I spoke about them a little bit earlier in the presentation, but here I'm going to go into detail. So one gap is around the no in this program is around the notion of cohorts or peer groups of individuals taking the same classes at the same time. Traditional brick and mortar universities, especially MBA programs, they have strong cohort groups with many team projects for you to sharpen your teamwork skills and build a lifelong network of friends 
within that cohort who you network with throughout the rest of your career. That will not happen at WGU. WGU tries to cover the gap with various IM groups or a career placement center or networking events and heavy email pro promotions, but uh, full disclosure, I can't really comment on those because I did not participate in them. For me, it was not a priority because half-ish of the MSDE works uh, tend to be more solitary. Plus, I already have the networking team building boxes checked from 25 years in the industry. So if you just have a bachelor's degree with little experience, then perhaps you should consider the cohort groups and networking opportunities of being physically present in a traditional brick and mortar university to be a better path than this online degree. So think about that. Cohort groups are pretty neat and you're not gonna have much here. They try, WGU, they have a uh, course chatter group and I got a lot of great material out of it, but you're not one-on-one -on -one with a live person. You're reading material that someone wrote a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. You take a lot of good information from it and I put it into my study plans, but it's not the same as being face-to-face -face present with a group of three, four, five people working on stuff. So you're not gonna get that in this degree. So know that. Next up, the conclusion. So in conclusion, I highly recommend the WGU Master of Science in Data Analytics, the MSDA program, if you're looking for a graduate degree in data science to further your career. Although by no means easy, if you put in the hours and the effort, it can be one of the fastest, most flexible, and most affordable paths to getting a data science graduate degree. Next up, addendum number one. Are there related online masters that you might be interested in? If you either have an MSDA and want to augment and add to it, or perhaps you're more interested in MBA or a graduate degree in computer science or cybersecurity, if so, here's some more examples that I looked up. Um, uh, the 01, 02, 03, those are links, and there's the actual URLs. I will take these URL links and put them in the description on the YouTube video at the bottom. But for now, you can take a screenshot if you want and just look at this. If you want to Master's in Computer Science from the University of Texas at Austin and you want it all online, look at that link. It's not bad. It's 10,000 bucks and takes two years and 30 credits to do it. And it's accredited. Uh, but in this case, I couldn't find the details very easily, so I just put a yes, the question mark. Cybersecurity, two different ones, WGU and Purdue. And you can see the cost difference depending on how fast you can get through it. Data Science, I don't have WGU here, but because we already discussed it earlier, but additional data analytics or data science or that's kind of related, a Master of Health Informatics at Purdue. And HIMSS actually accredits that. They're not really accredited, but they sponsor it and, and help generate the curriculum. Anyway, you can see the difference in credits, how long it takes, and the difference in cost. And then an MBA, WGU has one, so it'd be about 8,000 bucks, 34 credits. A bigger, fancier MBA at a brick and, well, this is all online, and it's equivalent to their brick and mortar, but it's 60 credits. So you're gonna be pushing two years and it's gonna cost 25,000 plus. And with these, you do get a, a, a good cohort experience, even though it's online. And, and the WGU one's not so much. But you can get an MBA in healthcare management, an MBA in IT, or just a general MBA. You take two extra credits, and some of the curriculum's different. You, you can go look at the links here that I'll put in a YouTube video and, and see all the details of what the course curriculum is. And then uh, information technology, IT, if you want a master's in that. So there's a lot of options out there. And there's many more than this. These are just ones that I looked up that were kind of equivalent or that you might uh, hook in with the MSDA. And finally, addendum number two. So you want to level up to a related online PhD? Those exist too. If you want to level up and go beyond a master's degree and do it all online, there are some paths. There's two paths in particular. One is to pursue a PhD, which is for teaching and research by contributing new knowledge. The second pathway is an applied doctorate for corporate professionals to research practical applications of existing knowledge and theory. If either path appeals to you, then look through these related degrees. So a D is a, a, a doctorate in computer science. A PhD is um, the educational or, or teaching type of a philosophy doctorate. So that's the difference. PhD, you can teach a little bit harder and always have a dissertation. A uh, doctorate usually or sometimes can have a, a dissertation, but you do a lot of researchy type stuff and it's more for corporate professionals and for practical applications of existing knowledge. So here you go, you can see all the costs. 
<laughs> they can get pretty steep and you can see how long it takes it, it takes quite a long time and you can see the number of credits that it takes but uh, yep, there's paths in computer science PhD doctorate cybersecurity data science data analytics IT and even instructional design if you wanted to uh, get a PhD in, in how to teach materials and do online training at Liberty University so there you go there's all the details and the numbers corresponding to each of these is the link and I'll go to the next page there's the links and I will put all these links oh and the cost some of them per credit but I tried to put the actual costs here assuming it would take you however long to get the stuff done get the work done but I'll put those links at the bottom of YouTube video in the description section so yeah, if you're curious about getting a PhD or doctorate, there's some examples that you can do all online. But, oh, I should mention, sure they're all online, but most of them require residency, sometimes one week a year, and then at the end, especially if you're doing a dissertation, they'll require several weeks of preparation and, and doing it. So that's, uh, you gotta factor that in. They just, you can't do a doctorate all online. Maybe a couple, I don't even think those ones. I couldn't tell for sure, so I put a no with question mark, but I bet they have some kind of a um, residency at the end. And that's it. Thank you for watching the video, and if you like it, thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the left.